Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ran. In this channel, I share knowledge and practical techniques on trauma healing and mental health conditions like eating disorder, bipolar disorder, depression, and anxiety. I hope by telling my very own stories that you will somehow feel seen and connected and inspired to keep faith because change and healing are possible. Today I wanted to share a topic on how to make friends when you have such anxiety because making friends, building connections is really one of the most challenging tasks for people with such anxiety because we are often scared to reach out to people because of the fear of rejection and also when we actually build a connection with people we constantly wonder if they are ready to cut ties with us if they could potentially like judge or criticize us behind our back so we are this like we crave for connections yet at the same time we are scared to shit so today I wanted to share a couple of things that have personally helped me in meeting new people expanding my social circle and building meaningful relationships The first thing is to start with your existing social circle. Don't overlook groups that you already belong to. For example, your neighborhood, your colleagues, your sports clubs, your gym clubs, and just any communities that you already belong to. Maybe for the past couple of years, you haven't been so involved, but they actually can provide you with great resources of new contacts. Maybe ask one of your co-workers out for lunch or a coffee break. Ask them about their weekend plans, ask them about their hobbies, or just ask some work-related or study-related topics that require further discussion. You will be surprised how pleased people are to share to disclose some information about themselves if you actually show your genuine interest. We are human beings, we actually all crave for connections. It's just oftentimes we feel like we're the only ones who's vulnerable, who's going through shits. So we put on pretense, we pretend that we have it all together, we pretend that we don't need help, we pretend that we're not vulnerable, we're not struggling. But in fact, we all do. We are both to live and survive in communities, not by ourselves. After all, everybody wants to be seen and heard. Everybody wants to be cared and appreciated as a unique human being. So don't just be fooled by everybody's pretense that they look so cool, they seem like they are so independent, they seem like they don't need anybody else to help them out. But in fact, if they don't take this tiny step, maybe you can take this tiny step forward a little bit. And if they reciprocate, that's the greatest thing. But if they don't, that's a tiny practice for you, right? You just kept going. When I was talking about the social groups, you were probably thinking that, well, you haven't been staying very active for the past two years. You are pretty much just invisible the whole time. But start by showing up more. Take baby steps to slowly expose yourself to different social occasions. Maybe you don't have to do anything, you just have to be there. You don't even have to be active. Maybe next time, try not stand in the corner, just move towards the center a little bit more. So take baby steps to expose yourself to social occasions. Volunteer is a great way of getting people to know you and getting people to come to you. Because if you are the volunteer of the group, people would potentially see you as this warm-hearted, helpful person and they would actually want to reach out to you. Oftentimes, people will chat with you, people will compliment you and just tell you what a great event you have been hosting and how much fun they're having. That's also how I got into my first volunteer role when I was studying in the US for my undergrad degree because I my English wasn't very good at that time and I was pretty shy and I had the severe anxiety when I have to meet new people. So I didn't have anybody at that time. I didn't belong to any groups. But some of my friends, they just enjoy going to the international center where a lot of international students hang out from different countries, from a different cultural background. And I tagged along when I was trying to overcome my fear of meeting new people. I didn't do anything for the first couple of events. I just hid out in the corner because I didn't want to be noticed. And I was still very nervous of initiating conversations so I just didn't do anything and I showed up more often to the international center I felt more comfortable and at one time luckily I got introduced to the president of the organization and I told him that I wanted to help 
and it took me enormous amount of courage to say that out loud to him because I was expecting well he probably would reject me but he was more than happy to take me in which is to my surprise so I started to help out with all those events I was very still shy so I was always the behind the scene person I never wanted to be in the front to tell people well I helped out most of the events but he was very nice he just introduced me to the crowd he introduced me as the warm-hearted volunteer who is very helpful that's when people started to notice me and they would come up to me and say hi even when I was not in the international center that's a very successful reality check that's a very important step also for people with social anxiety because we always anticipate the worst we always assume the worst of people how they will not like us how they will judge us how they will reject us but in fact some people may not like us but there are a lot of people who will like us for who we are the more we do reality check by practicing expanding our comfort zone, reaching out to people, initiating stuff with people, the higher the chance that we will be proven wrong about our originally like negative assumptions we have about ourselves and about other people. And the second thing we need to do is to really take time to explore our true interests and passion. Really take time to explore inward what you like, what makes you happy, what kind of social values or life values that you have, what kind of things is acceptable to you and what's not. Only if you know what you want, who you are, you will find people alike and who has the same value aligned with yours. It's just way too painful for us to go along with whoever it is without really first taking time to find out well if their values actually suit ours, if we're compatible, if we are gonna be happy when we're friends or when we're partners. It's just way too painful to pretend to go along with people who don't even share the same value from yours. Because for people with social anxiety, it's already easy for us to doubt ourselves, to second guess who we are. We would take on all the blame we would try to look inward and find faults within ourselves without first questioning, well, if we are compatible first. It doesn't make them wrong. It doesn't make you wrong. It's just not compatible. They will be happier with other people and you will be happier with your squad. But for us, it's just way too painful and hurtful to be triggered of the anxiety, to be triggered of the traumas that we're not good enough to a point we just start to question our worth our value and if there's something wrong with us so really take time to ask yourself those questions who are you what makes you happy what kind of person you want to meet what kind of social groups you want to blend in what kind of atmosphere you're looking for what kind of activities that you're looking for be really selective when you're exploring those social events be very clear about your standards also because that's gonna determine how relaxed and how comfortable you feel at those social events. The more relaxed, the more you are the person you already are. And the higher the chance that people who get attracted to you is because you are who you are. In recent years, I've been exploring those fitness classes. For example, one of my favorite recently is to do like battle rope classes. So in those classes, we get paired uh, like two people in a group. When I first joined the class, I was very embarrassed because I felt like nobody wanted to be paired with me. So I always head out in the corner and always was the last one to get picked by someone or even arranged by the trainer because I wouldn't initiate at all. As I joined more classes, some of the experienced ladies would come to me and ask me if I wanted to be in their group. At first, I thought they were doing it just for pity because I was always alone and sad. But later, I realized that nobody really cared. They just wanted to have a good workout. Some of the girls even asked for my contact information and some of them, some of the girls even asked for my contact information because they figured that we work so well in group when finishing up those sets and also we cooperated so well. And that was a huge confidence boost. And also it just completely overthrew 
my assumption that people wouldn't want to be in a group with me. So I learned to do the same thing. I mimicked the tone, the wording, the gesture, just to approach people kindly to ask them, do they want it to be paired with me? Other than those girls who have already been paired up, nobody so far <clears throat> has rejected me. Those kind of successful attempts really gave me enormous amount of courage to go ahead and ask things directly, even nowadays in my life, about anything. The third thing we need to do is to practice initiating small talks. One super effective trick I've learned is to initiate small talks to people around me who seem warm, nice, and kind. To do this, we need constant practice. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. The more you push yourself to do it, the sooner and better you will get at initiating small talks. To do this, you can actually start with something small, like just make more eye contact or just try to smile at someone and see if they smile back. Just give someone a compliment and comment on something like the weather or the coffee just to test water and filter out those people who are kindly giving you feedback, who show this willingness and openness to potentially befriend you. The key here is to always choose the right person, even though sometimes it takes practice to get there. But don't badger someone who is unwilling to reciprocate, who don't have this emotional availability for closeness because as sensitive as we are, we may get hurt. I know a lot of people who have such anxiety share this crazy thought like I did before. If we initiate stuff, we get rejection and we will be humiliated. Which isn't quite true because rejection says more about that person instead of you. If they reject you, it could mean a million things. It could mean probably they are having a bad day. They are pretty anxious for closeness and they don't want any friends. They wanted to be left alone and be sad. There could be a million reasons for that. And you couldn't have possibly known which one is it. Worst case scenario, if it's personal, there are a million people out there who wanted to, who is willing to see through your skin and appreciate your good qualities. So give yourself this chance to find those people who belong to your squad. Don't beat yourself up for people who don't have this ability to do so. Another super important thing is to allow authenticity, even in small talks. For people with social anxiety, we would go extra miles to hide who we are because we had this crazy belief that once people see through our pretense, they will stop liking us. If they see who we really are, they would walk away. So we have this fear of abandonment. So a lot of us, we are people pleasers. We just wanted to go along with whatever people are thinking, whatever they are saying, and whatever they do is fine with us. And we ignore our own needs, our own emotions, and our own feelings because we don't want to cause any trouble. The fact that we go miles to hide who we are, to put on a pretense, is actually worse than not having any friends at all because even if we have friends based on the pretense, the mask that we put on, we would know deep down that people are loving our masks. They are not loving who we are. Deep down, we still feel this insecurity, this crazy feeling that we're not good enough and we're not loved and we're not worthy of people's attention and caring and genuine connections. So really, even if it's just expressing your feelings, just express how you feel. Just say something like, well, um, I don't know how I feel about that or well, I feel slightly positive and confused about this thing. Taking a stand is really important because it's about personal truth, it's about personal integrity, and it's such an important factor in building healthy self-esteem. So give yourself this chance to be who you really are, to overthrow the stereotypes that you hold against yourself, to overthrow those crazy assumptions that we had that people are gonna not like us, they're gonna criticize us, and they're gonna say bad things about us and abandon us eventually. Give people around you this opportunity to know who you really are, to see this amazing human being underneath this pretense, because authenticity is the only way towards genuine connections. All right, everyone, I hope this video is helpful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanted to see more videos like this, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.